What is up you guys and welcome to the post-draft analysis from the UBLD League with yours truly Skyrender and his Scandinavian Southlands. I, I felt that went pretty well, didn't it? This is not at all a retake, like the fifth one. <laughs> anyway people, um, I've been for the longest time in Generation 7 here of Pokemon, a lock to a one league only and that has been my own league and while it's definitely a good league, I'm I know how easy it is to be very, very, very narrow-minded, and I really, really want to flex my competitive muscles outside of something on my own, and UBL was definitely a league that, that has been doing a few things right for the last year at least, and I was very happy to be a part of their D-League. I uh, really hope that this, no matter how good or bad I perform, uh, will result in me having a place in the real roster and their real league. So with that said, um, they have a different tier format, which I'm definitely, it's heavily based on the performance of the leagues more than the smoke and meta, which is something I can get behind with. There are a few things I question, but at the same time, there were reasons for certain Pokemon's placement. It also meant that a few Pokemon here that are included are interesting to be drafting, actually. So with that in mind, I was heavily looking forward to actually drafting a few of these Pokemon's. Um, that said... Uh, there are always going to be snipes involved, and um, one be smart to actually keep that in mind. Uh, I really want to draft something more unique and a few Pokemon that haven't been drafted before. That was a re at least the original of my idea. So um, I I've tried my very best to kind of follow that aspect, but of course, in the middle here, start things start to kind of tremble. I think that went for all teams that are involved. But like I said, there snipes are to be made. There are certain Pokemon that clear a lot better than others in different tier formats for them. And, of course, the best one went early. That is to be expected. So, yeah, with that said, we're going to go over my team analysis. And I'm going to go over each individual Pokemon I drafted turn by turn. And, of course, cover if I was sniped, which Pokemon I was aiming towards. And what that overall may or may not mean for the rest of my draft. So, with that said, let's start off with my first draft. And I was in the seventh round. So, yeah, no tapus for the Scandinavian Southlands. I was, I was kind of frisking him, I, I was trying to tell him, you know, Coco is bad, I should have that, because it's awful, I like, use awful Pokemon, but they, no, they didn't buy it, it, it went turn 1, of course it did, bastard. So the first Pokemon I decided to draft was the Pokemon I was very unsure I was going to get, and that was Psygod, the OG form, or the 50% form. Um, here's the thing, Psygod was recently banned from OU for... For, I think, the right reasons. It's not broken, but there are designs with the Pokemon itself that the core is very hard to break and are easily able to maneuver around teams. And um, you don't have that luxury in in a league format, and I'm very aware of that. Uh, so I happily drafted it. It's a Pokemon I've wanted to use for quite some time, but haven't been able to. Um, for different reasons, but usually this is a Pokemon that you, it's not a top on people's list. Um, you do want to get the Dragon type, you do want to get a good ground type, and ground and dragon is a very good defensive typing, but usually you want to get something around that. I didn't do that. Uh, so my my, uh, my eyes were locked on this one, and um, it is, it's decent. It's very decent. It's one of those Pokemon that have really good four sets. You have the choice banded set. Of course, Thousand Arrows is the half reason that set is working. And then we have the Dragon Dance set, which is pretty standard, and the Coil Bulky set. And then we have the, um, the Sub Stall set, with, uh, which basically is a worse Glitz score. But then again, this Pokemon deals better, it gets certain threats, so it kind of works. The Stall Breaker set is it's decent. It's definitely decent. Uh, but yeah, nothing really to it. I wanted Saigar, I wanted to try this Pokemon out. I've, I've faced it so many times, and I've always, like, suffered when I've team plan is going up against this Pokemon is very very hard and I think I now want to be in that chair where I at least get to deliver that feeling towards my opponents instead and actually not having that feeling myself so yeah looking forward to using Saigar I think it's a tremendous Pokemon and I couldn't be happier drafting it so really hope it does well for me in this season the second Pokemon I decided to draft was an anti-pick. While I haven't used Tangrowth at all, this, let's see. Yeah, I haven't used Tangrowth at all in a league in uh, Generation 7. So it's definitely a Pokemon that, while I am accustomed to for Generation 6, 
Um, I definitely say it's changed quite a bit since then. It actually has. The C moves made its defensive capabilities much, much worse, but at the same time, it's defensively very strong against most of the more threatening Pokemon in the meta, looking at the likes of Tapu Koko, for example, which, as I said before, really bad Pokemon, right? Anyway, Tiger was mainly drafted, so I don't have to deal with that since I have a Psyguard. You draft Tangrove because you don't want to deal with it. That's basically it. So I've drafted Psyguard because I don't want to deal with it, and I drafted its number one check being Tangrove because I don't want to deal with it. So basically, I do nullify my chances of my opponent being able to check Psyguard more properly. So, I, I, so far, so good. Tangrove overall is a very, very sturdy Pokemon. It's very hard to kill. It's definitely on the slower side, but... And, you know, have a... Or I should say a bad special defense, but Assault Vest, most of the time, you resolve that. Um, but Brawl and Move Pool, go, good mixed offensive stats, and the Move Pool does allow it to go mixed with Knock Off, Earthquake, even on the physical side, even though it has a lot of special offensive moves. So, overall, I'm glad of using Tangrove, as I said before. Um, it's one of those Pokemon that are very, very hard to deal with and not being forced, same as Psyguard, to deal with it head on. It's, um, it's a feeling that is great to be having. And uh, so far, my draft goes as according to plan, basically. So, for my next pick, I actually decided to draft Greninja. Now, I should be saying here, this is a Torn Greninja, not a Protean nor an Ash Greninja. Uh, but I think it's it's a worthy Pokemon, and it's a higher tier Pokemon here. And... Um, I think there are good reasons for that. It's have a very strong speed tier, decent mixed offensive stats, and a very, very broad move pool, and dual has it in toxic spikes and spikes. So, yeah, and I think OU showcased that regular Greninja is still a threat, uh, even though the regular Greninja is, of course, used mainly without the protein, mainly because, of course, you want to develop yourself to Ash Greninja. But I think before that, that it's shown since marriage, its speed tier is annoying to deal with. Being able to outspeed the likes of Tornadus T, for example, it's it's annoying. Uh, it's very annoying. Very speedy and a good dual stab combination of dark and water. Now, before this draft, I should be stated here that I actually had Starmie in mind. I also had Slow King in mind, mainly because I do want to have a kind of regeneration core. But decided against that and just thought, you know what? I haven't used Greninja at all. Let's use Greninja. Because I use Stormy right now in another league. And I feel that while it's a very, very good Pokemon and definitely one, the best spinner probably in the league, it's what just. Since I'm using it already, I kind of felt the fire was a little bit gone a little bit. So, yeah, why don't you use Greninja? Um, and this is probably my first real offensive Pokemon I've drafted. So, I really want to see how this Pokemon performs. I do love its move pool of being able to go physical or special. Its special pool is very good. It's definitely your center water type with you know, ice beams and whatnot. Besides its stab, it also gets even grass knot with extra sensory. So it can be extremely specific. A very good Pokemon with the likes of Expert Belt. And uh, yeah, it can just. You can key point which Pokemon are going to be your number one check. And you can probably hit this for super effective damage anyway. Because you're speedy and your move pool is probably good enough to solve that issue. So Greninja is a very, very underrated threat. And I'm definitely looking forward to using it, if anything. So, with Greninja kind of picked already, I still wanted a rather sturdy speed here, and I actually had Sarah Aura in mind, I'm not gonna lie, um, but that Pokemon went drafted, so I decided, you know, Thunderous. Uh, I was, to be fair, looking to Thunderous T at first, but then I remembered, you know, the speed here are different between them, 111 is a lot more desirable than 101. So, Thunderous Incarnate is the Pokemon I decided to draft, which is a Pokemon that it's rarely drafted actually. It's kind of considered bad in draft format, and it's not because it is bad, it's because we have Koku, which is clearly better, uh, and are the primal electric threat already. And then it, there are a lot of other electric types that you use for different reasons, which means the Incarnate form has been quite forgotten. It's definitely a threat and should be regarded as such, but there are reasons it's not as used. As much as it has been, the, of course, the Thunder Wave weakness or the Thunder Wave nerf to get it with the likes of Prankster being nerfed made it less effective, but it still is very effective. In Smogon, for example, it's it actually should have been UU had it not been blacklisted from UU, and it's because the power creep of Fundy is just not there. It's it's too much for the tier to handle. It's not like Zapdos, which has a subpar, I guess you'd say, speed tier and a decent special attack. This is a very high speed tier. 
which pick up the very key threats with a very high mixed offensive stats. And I've used Thunders before actually, uh, though same thing here, not in Generation 7. So looking forward to using it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm stating obvious here, but this is a Pokemon that I've turned to my Sea Captain. It is because it has Sea Fly and I felt, you know what, that's, that's not annoying to deal with at all. Let's, let's get that. So yeah, <laughs> here we go basically. I am definitely feeling Thunderous. I'm definitely gonna think it's going to be an interesting Pokemon to be using in this league format. And that's really all I have to say. It's a Pokemon that I think uh, a lot of people have trouble dealing with because unless you know what it does, it's very hard to switch into until then. That's a, just, that's a luxury that very few Pokemon has. Thunderous is one of them and that's really, really cool. Now, starting actually round five, I got sniped for the first time for real. Uh, I wanted the Pokemon Nehelego, which is a Pokemon I never used before, uh, but it got drafted two turns before me, and um, while that isn't necessarily bad, it meant that I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to get. I still, in my mind, wanted a Poison type, so so, so I decided to get Salasal, which I definitely don't think is bad. I really want to have that out of the way. Salasal is one of those Pokemon that I think are going to be tremendously tough for a lot of people to be dealing with, so I just with that in mind, it's a luxury to have in Salasal. I think its speed is tremendous, and we keep going for those offensive picks. And Salasal is a fairy killer, that's basically the roundabout to it. It doesn't have a natural check in steel type because of the fire stab, and corrosions mean that even the most bulkier poison type can be toxic stall from this Pokemon. So, yeah. It's annoying. It's a very annoying Pokemon. I've used it before, but not effectively. It has a lot to do with that. I didn't know too much about it then. It was, it was an early meta, and I think I have a better grasp now after seeing it being used in RU, for example. Uh, I know what to expect. I know how to uh, check things with it. So, I really hope I get good use out of it. But Slassel is definitely a Pokemon that I would say are... Um, a Pokemon I drafted out of necessity at first and uh, it, it may or may not be a Pokemon I want to keep on having for the fur of the league. It depends on how it performs, how I feel I can make it perform. Um, but it's, it's a Pokemon that definitely can be dropped off if I'm feeling stressed out and uh, that's basically what I'm trying to say. I was definitely debating myself whether or not I want to get Salasil or Cobalion. Cobalion is definitely on the list for the next one and I thinking about it afterwards I should definitely have gotten Cobalion because, of course, Cobalion got drafted just to pick before me, and I had to get another Steel type. Now, here's the thing: there weren't really that many good Steel types left. I kind of wanted Mega Aggron, but at the same time, kind of didn't because all of a sudden the Bug types didn't look too sturdy either. And um, the other pick was Metagross, but I had my goals on getting Mesprit, so. Yeah, I was just not feeling it, so I decided to get Mega Scissor, which round 6 get not getting drafted until then, that's pretty big, uh, to be honest, and um, I actually love Mega Scissor, I think it's one of the best Mega Pokemon around, thing is, I've used it so many times, I really want to say that, I've used it so many times, so I wanted to avoid getting Mega Scissor for that reason, so it's not because it's bad, it's because I really think it's so good that we overused it, so... With that said, I, I, I clearly are, are of course <laughs> keeping it. It's one of the best defoggers, it's one of the best setup sweepers, it has the best priority in bullet punch with technician. There are so many things done right with Scissor. It's going to be one of those Pokemon that my opponent is going to be forced to be dealing with. Going like that's some same as Tangroft and Saigon. It's a Pokemon that you have to make calls. What set is it? Is, is it a defensive set? Is it a special defensive set? Or is it a pure setup sweeper set? What is it? Is it pivot or is it bug bite? It's all of those things boiled into one little red lobster package and it's just marvelous. Uh, Scissor is absolutely, since Tapu Lele is banned in so many leagues, it turns out to be probably the best Mega. I definitely put it in the same range as Mega Medisham and uh, Law Party as the best Mega Pokemon. But for me, it's definitely among those three. Yeah, I hear the mega lot of guys screaming, I hear you. But it's not a voice I'm listening to, but I hear it. But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that it's Scissor is very one-dimensional, yet the things it does, it does it so very, very well. 
So there's really no reason of not getting it. It's it's tremendous. I, I think Scissor is great. And uh, like I said, there there were, there were reasons why I didn't want to pick it, and it's because I think it's too good and I use it too often. And those are the most worthless reasons to give a Pokemon ever. It's it's a very it's a very suitable Pokemon for my team, and uh, it makes sense to have it there. I just really want to test another Steel type, and uh, I really actually want a Cobalion. Um, so yeah, with that said, you know I'm getting now a Ground type without without rocks and a Steel type without rocks. So it's it's looking grim. It's definitely looking grim. So I follow up the next round, of course, with Mesprit. Now I had a vision that if I, if I got Cobalion, then maybe Gardevoir was a better option than Mesprit. Um, that was loosely based on that, depending on who got rocks or not. Basically, since I didn't get Cobalion, I was never gonna get Gardevoir because now I needed something to set up self rocks, and I'm not picking Yuxi. Aesop is an option, but but that's that's basically where I draw the line. Um, that said, yeah, I mean Mesprit is good. Mesprit is really good. It's one of those Pokemon that are, you know it they're, they they have it in PU. And it's there because there are a lot of really good psychic types that does different things. It doesn't have stats that are leaping yet are very balanced. All of stats is what I believe is HP and speed are 80, then the rest is 105, which is above average and very bulky for being a psychic type. But without recovery, there are issues involved with that. But self rocks, healing wish, and a broad move pool uh, lacks focus blast for some reason. But it's just one of those Pokemon that it works. It has a really good variety involved with it. And Mesprit is just a key threat depending on what it's facing. It is one of those Pokemon that actually wins versus Lando. Because even if Lando has knocked off for U-turn, Mesprit can take most of that damage. And Lando is, of course, forced to fight around Mesprit to be able to even deal with it. But eventually it will lose to Mesprit's Ice Beam. And I think that's a great perk to be having. But overall, I think Mesprit is good. I think it works well towards most of the opponents I'm going to be forced to be dealing with. And um, that's really all I have to say. It's very underrated. Uh, in a league format, I think it's it's put in a higher um, higher tier than most Pokemon. And it has, I think, a lot to do with its performance in the league are a lot better than it is in like, smoking tiers. It's just it's one of those Pokemon that just works very well. I've used Mesprit, however, in uh, Generation 7 before, uh, but I, I like what I've used. Um, it either becomes a Wall Breaker, a Setup Sweeper, or a Stealth Rocker, and it does all of those roles very well, and uh, I'm going to hold it for that. I even used using it as a Scarf set with Healing Wish to either Wall Break something, Revenge Kill, or Heal something to be able to wrap up the game, and it does all of these roles very well, and... Uh, yeah, I have no, what do you say, I don't regret, uh, regret picking this Pokemon, it's one of the better Pokemon in this league, and I think I got it at a discount of anything. So with that said, yeah, Dianchi. Now I should say it here that I, I didn't intend to get Dianchi at all, I did have intentions to get Mega Dianchi, um, but as you guys know, Nihilego was drafted, Mega Dianchi went way before that, so... Um, Getting regularly and she was kind of um, kind of spicy uh, because it's a Pokemon that I don't necessarily think are all that great. Yet it has really good offen or both offensive and defensive stats. 115 in both its defensive stats is very good. It's just its HP is so low at 50 that <clears throat> it's a very shaky, bulky Pokemon. And of course, it's that speed. It's a 50 base speed, which means it's a decent trick room setter, if anything. Um. And besides that, mixed offensive stat 100 is, it's good. It's definitely good. The energy overall, I think, can work really well. The main reason I drafted this Pokemon was because now the fairies were looking really, really dim, and I needed a rock type. Now, I did have intention of getting right on, but <clears throat> if I did that, then, well, I wouldn't have, have that many fairies to choose between them, basically ending up with, like, aromatis and stuff like that, and I don't want to go for that. I'm really not... So, uh, the energy it is. Now, I think it solves a lot of things for my team. It actually works as a um, good defensive Pokemon towards a Pokemon like, let's say, Tangrowth. 
which has weakness of both fire and flying and I think they work very well together because Tangrov do kind of parry uh, the worst earthquakes or earth powers or what, what have you so it's definitely not something I wouldn't say this Pokemon are bad it's just it needs it needs support it's definitely not individually strong as other Pokemon I've drafted this and uh, if I'm using the Yenshi it's going to be with the mind that I need to check something offensively and the Yenshi is usually the response to that so that's I think that's a weakness to have when you're creating a team that you'll have to draft a Pokemon out of necessity and I think the Yenshi kind of became that but that said the type combination is a good defensive type and I think I'm, I'm convinced that I'm going to use this Pokemon a lot because it just works well with some synergies I have in my team it just as I said it's not an offensive fairy I want an offensive fairy and knowing that I'm forced to draft something defensive for other reasons is always poor planning um, but that's all it it makes sense for my team so I'm happy to have it I'm just a bit pissed it was um, drafted the way it ended up with now my next pick here was very much focused on getting a spinner cryogonal which is a Pokemon I've used far too often was not the Pokemon I planned on picking of course it wasn't right yeah I had my eyes on Hitmonchan I wanted a fighting type and I think Hitmonchan made a lot of sense it went the same round, but I'd definitely say like this, like the Hitmon top went before that. I should have seen the signs that, you know, maybe when I get Hitmon Chan, now is your chance. Um, that said though, Cryogonal is a better spinner than Hitmon Chan. It, it of course is Levitate, well, come on. But it's just like I said, I've used it so often. Um, it's one of those Pokemon that I think most people who are playing up against it don't feel it's a threat but forget that it has a very high special attack it has a obnoxiously high special defense at 130 and its defensive stat is 50 I believe and then we have 80 in its its HP so it's a special defensive wall that is immune to earthquakes of course immune to spikes and toxic spikes which means it filters all the spinner quite naturally it has recovery which means that it can play a bulkier role if it forced to it just the reason why it isn't working as a defensive Pokemon as well is because it is an ice type that that's basically it like you have the weakness of fire steel fighting rock and of course being a spinner weak to rocks are always is a dumb concept to still be using in pokemon but uh, yeah i mean there are issues with the pokemon but especially but it can take a special defensive hit it can take a fire blast and still shook it off and you know, recover afterwards um it just that it's very clear that it's special defensive so physical threats can force this pokemon out the only very strong part of this Pokemon Hour 2 is it's a 105 speed tier, which means a lot of people need to creep it if they want to deal with it, and it has free strike, which means there are no checks on water types. The issue here is that it has a very, very poor move pool. We have Dark Pulse, we have Flash Cannon, and we have Ice Beam Blizzard, and those are the core elements here. Rest is going to fill her up with Hidden Powers, or Toxic, we'll go for that game. Um, but I think that's... That's why it is in PU, for example. It's just one of those Pokemon. While Ice Stab is a very good stab, it just is. Mmm. It's not right. <laughs> it's what I'm trying to say. Um, but that said, though, I think Trigonal is good. And I'm going to have a lovely time using it. It's just, like I said here, much like a Dianchi, it's a Pokemon that um, I've drafted out of necessity. And that's really a good thing. And I really felt that these two last picks I made back to back are made with one snipe in mind that kind of ruined the whole synergy i was going for now building with synergy that still works but it's it's against my original idea of not drafting pokemon i haven't used before i do know i've used in the latest four leagues now and uh, yeah you know I, I, i'm not gonna draft draft avalug out of uh, I, that i should get it i should have drafted avalug what hell but yeah yeah that's a pokemon absolutely not gonna use ever but um, yeah, Cronal makes sense. It just, like I said, much like the NC, I drafted for the wrong reasons, and I, um, yeah, I'm not feeling it. But it's going to be great for my team. It doesn't necessarily matter. It has the right tools to be doing things right. So with that said, it's cool to have it. Perk not, or pun not intended. They're really cool. Now I already made it up my mind which was the Pokemon I was gonna draft absolutely last. So I was looking upon which Pokemon do I have enough points left to get and I needed a fighting type because Hitmonchan was clearly not an option and I looked upon the, um, the, the um, 
the tier 2, which is 1 in 20 points, which is the second highest tier. Found Conkeldur. Felt need Conkeldur. Why do I don't have the Conkeldur? Let's get the Conkeldur. And now I don't know whether or not I want to have it. <laughs> the thing is here, Conkeldur, extremely good Pokemon overall. That's not going to change. Um, I want to defend my thought process here. But Conkeldur is a Pokemon I never used. And I've uh, never used it because it's a slow fighting type. I don't like slower fighting types. Hitmonchan is barely cutting it for a, what I would consider slow. Uh, Conkeldur is clearly slower. So, hmm. But we have Diagenshi, which clearly can set up Frick Room. So, oh, ooh, mm, mm. It, It's not bad. It's just that I necessarily didn't consider Conkeldur ever. And now I have Conkeldur and still feel as shaky as I did before. <sighs> the thing is so here though, Conkeller has two abilities that are really good, or has three abilities which is decent, but you're going to use, just use two of them. We have Sheer Force, which is great, to get with Life Form, of course. Then we have Guts, which makes a ton of sense, and is a really, really good combination. And then we have Ara Fist, which I don't know why I would use. I don't need a boosted Mac Punch if I'm going to get myself burned with the Flame Orb, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah. Conkeller is great, it's really nothing wrong with it, and um, it has priority mag punch, as stated. It has elemental punches, it has drain punch, which is pretty better. It's a very good assault vest user. So, um, it's a Pokemon that I think it's staying if I'm deciding that, you know, I can't get something better. But as I said, the only issue I see with Conkeller is that it is on the slower side. Mag punch only resolves so much, so. We'll see how I feel once it goes on here. But yeah, Conkeldur's least are a very good Pokemon, so I'm happy to get it, actually. It just was a Pokemon as much as the other ones. Didn't feel I was gonna get that at first. Uh, but with that said, only one Pokemon is left, and that Pokemon was some a Pokemon I absolutely was gonna get no matter what. So um, yeah, let's cover him. Now my last Pokemon is a Pokemon that don't need an introduction, but we're gonna do that anyway. Tauros. And now, then I made my UBL uh, video, I actually made a recording to them specifically uh, why I wanted to join, and uh, then it was one question of um, which Pokemon you felt was under and overrated and why in a Lee format. And the overrated one I say was uh, Landers T, uh, mainly because of its speed here, easier to deal with. And then I put it underrated Tauros. Good speed here, usable special attack, and a very usable physical pool. Now, this is a Pokemon that has issue. I think one of the biggest ones is that it lacks a fighting move and a more proper dark move. Um, but that's, in my opinion, it, it's just it. Like, Shefo is a very usable ability to go with Team Date. It has Anger Point, which I don't believe no one's going to ever be using. But uh, those two abilities are very good towards that. 1 of 10 speed, as I said, very, very strong speed here because that means there are threats here that are at least checked on that environment. And uh, yeah, the move pool allows it to be rather flexible. Um, I mean, we have Body Slam, Rock Climb, then we have Semba Headbutt, Iron Head, uh, Rock Slide. Um, it just it just overall works so well towards that. And then we have Earthquake if you don't want to use anything that's Shear Force boosted. Um, it just does so many things right. And I'd had my eyes on this Pokemon. I knew nobody else was going to get it. And <clears throat> I guess there are good reasons for that. Tauros is... For all sense of purposes, it's catered towards a certain play style, and I definitely wouldn't say a bulkier team was going to use Tauros ever. It, if you want to play aggressive, that's why the reason you use Tauros. It's a very uninspiring Pokemon, though. I mean, it, it looks just like a three-tailed cow bull, and that's rather boring design. It's good that the Pokemon itself are very usable. It turns out to be one of my favorite League Pokemon to actually get, because it offensively does... It fills holes and fills them very well, and um, I'm very happy to get that Pokemon, if anything. But yeah, I mean, it's underrated for sure, and I got a showcase to these guys at the D-League why it is. I could very well be wrong here, and you know, it all turns to shit, but I felt that since I've recommended it, that I need to use it, I need to showcase why I've said it was so good. So let's try to prove them why it is so good. So with that said, Tauros is picked as a last pick for the Scandinavian Southland, and that's gonna wrap my last Pokemon for this league. So overall, I mean the team is... I am happy with the team, but I also know there are a few things here that need to be... 
fixed is probably the right word to use. Um, I'm already considered a few drops, if not three already. Um, Kong Gelder is included in this, it may very well be dropped. Salazzle is almost also there, but those are the only two mods that I think make the least amount of sense for my team. Uh, I still need to get another Stealth Rocket, I do believe. Mesprit and Dianchi can't be the only ones. I think that's too tough. And uh, their defensive typing isn't necessarily covering each other's issues. So I think another one would be a much appreciated. But other than that, um, the other one makes sense and definitely gonna be kept for that reason. Um, spinning possibility. The thing is here, both Thunderous and uh, Scissor has Defog, and I think that's good enough. While it is unfortunate that my strongest threats uh, are forced to be, be defoggers, <clears throat> it is unfortunate, but it all depends on the matchup whether or not I need it. Never a cryogenal for spinning, um, and that's going to turn out quite right. I did consider getting the likes of Hitma Lee, for example, but I think Lee is fantastically awful no matter what. And there really are so many good um, offensive spinners left, so cryogenal is mostly likely staying even though I was considered like a pillow swine, for example, but no, mm -mm. Um, still need a rapid spin, Krogonol is actually fairly decent at that, and I should consider that as an aspect. So, um, yeah, if I do any changes before this video goes up, because I do pre-record this on Thursday, um, if I haven't made any changes, or made changes before that, that's going to be active for week two, um, so not the first week. Basically what I'm trying to say is, if I've made any changes before this Sunday, then they're going to be included in this video. If I'm not made it, then you know, I'm clearly not made it. So that's it guys, as always, thank you for of course watching, and uh, really, really help me and support me throughout this season of the UBL. It's going to be great, I'm really looking forward to another league here where, you know, it's a Wi-Fi league, so lots more uploads, which is definitely something I feel I'm lacking. Um, I'm just happy that that's finally going down and that this is a league that's encouraging it. It's going to be very exciting. So that's it guys, thank you for watching and like I said, support me at the Scandinavian stuff for this season. And I'll see you next Sunday with the next upload versus Vipsis. Until then, of course, take care.